Welcome to Writer's Life, an ongoing conversation with writers, authors, and folks in the publishing industry. I'm your host, Marvel Harrison, Publishing Director, Mimbus Press of Western New Mexico University. It is a pleasure to share a conversation today with Cindy Rice, a writer of many years, current president of Phoenix Writers Club, a writing group in Phoenix, Arizona, which was founded 96 years ago. It's almost a century old. She also is co-founder of Writers Inspiration Group that meets every Tuesday afternoon for prompt writing via Zoom right now. And as you can imagine, everyone is welcome. Welcome to Writer's Life, Cindy. Thank you. And thank you, Marvel, for hosting this and for inviting me. Thank you. Well, you've been a writer for decades and hold in-depth experience with writing groups. Uh, please share with us about, you know, the Phoenix Writers Club and what that PWC has brought to you personally as a writer. Well, Phoenix Writers Club, like you said, is getting up to 100 years old. We started in 1926 and it was started as a social group. Also, it was started because women were not allowed into the press club. The men would not allow them. So these feisty women thought, well, I'll start my own club, which they did. And I don't, well, the press club is still around, of course, but these women were very strong, inspiring women. And it's gone on and on. It started meeting in someone's home and it went on and on from there. We used to meet in a restaurant and that was the social part. We had lunch, we'd have a speaker. Zoom is kind of put a little cramp on the social part, but we're grateful to have it. And we welcome writers of every level, all genres. Um, we're just a welcoming club. And every month we have a speaker from all different areas. The nice thing about Zoom is we've been able to have speakers from all over the country. So that's a plus. And we're still in the process of figuring out if we're going to stay on Zoom, if we're going to do Zoom a few months and then meet in person, because we really miss the in-person. And a lot of us have been in the club for a long time. Um, I started in 2003 and I am current president. I've been president in the past. I've been a speaker chair, vice president, pretty much um, run the gamut. And I love it. I mean, as anyone knows with a writing club or any club, when you're president or a leader, it gets a little hairy sometimes. Um, a lot of personalities, especially with creatives, lots of different personalities. But it's fun to learn about these people and share the writings. We have a little program right now where I share every month different writers' stories. They send them to me and I send them out to everyone. It can be a story, a blog post, um, poetry. And this way it gets us to know a little bit about what we write. And, 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 and that's been fun, a lot of good feedback. And it's just been a very learning and almost cathartic group because you really share, and as writers, of course, you share, a lot of us do memoir, so you're really sharing your life, and we're very trusting, and we're also even more so in our Tuesday Writers Inspiration Group. It's almost like a therapy group sometimes. <laughs> well, Cindy, I'm curious. You said it's all genres. Uh, does it include all genders at this point? Yes, it does. In 1996, okay. we welcomed men. Um, I don't know why, but there's never as much many men as women. It seems in any of the groups I've been in. And for whatever reason, but we do have our smattering of men, very successful, many of them. Um, we have people that have published books anywhere from travel to memoir, novels, essays. We had one lady who unfortunately she passed during COVID, but she wrote about Jack Durant, who was a Phoenix icon. 
I guess he was infamous. He had a beginning in the, the mob and you really didn't know much about him. He has a restaurant, Durance, which is still running, has had people of all different backgrounds have met there. And so there was like kind of shady, kind of Vegas mobster vibe. And Mabel Leo wrote several books about him and they were turned into a film. Excuse me, were they um, considered biographical? Were they uh, accurate in historical terms? They were, though, I don't know that Jack Durant would think some of it was correct. (laughs) She interviewed the people who worked for him, his family, though his, everything was kind of shady. So she really had to do some investigative reporting with him. And the people who have read it, who knew him, agree that these things happened. She spoke with a few of his ex-wives, but Jack himself was just very, very aloof. And he didn't want people to know his background, but it was all out there. It was just there. Well, you, you moved on or to add to your Phoenix Writers Club to adding and co-founding the um, inspiration, the Writers Inspiration Group. And you said that that feels maybe therapeutic or, I mean, certainly it sounds like it's a support group for writers. Yes, It's it based is. on prompts, is that correct? Yes, we started it, uh, another lady and I, because um, Natalie Goldberg, who wrote, wrote writing, yeah, writing down the bones, suggests or says that if you're a writer, you need to practice. And we thought, what better way than to have a group where every week we practice? So we put a prompt out or a couple prompts, which can be anything. And we write. We write for about 10 minutes. Then we stop. We share if we want to. We don't. You know, we might comment. We don't give feedback or critique. And then we go on. So it's just a way to write and share different writing. And we've had, again, people from all different levels of writing. And we had one woman, I remember, who came in. She says, I'm not a writer. Well, the next year, she self-published her first book. So, and it is, again, it's a very sharing community. So that's one thing that people appreciate that join. And we are on Zoom which has been a little bit, because again, we're social. We used to meet at different places. We'd bring chocolate and we'd sit there forever and and that. And I think really the writing community I have found here is extremely helpful to each other. Um, We are connecting with other groups and we all help each other out. So. That's been one of the best things I have found with writing. Well, Cindy, what besides um, chocolate motivates you to write? One thing is our prompts and or deadlines. It, it makes me feel like, okay, you need to sit down and you need to do this. Because you know, sometimes my mind just wanders and it's, you know, there's always something else to do. I do get inspired too by my grandchildren. I have written things for them, about them. And also, uh, because right now I'm writing a memoir in poetry and flash pieces. And it's taken a really long time before I could deal with certain issues to write that, as I think most writers who write memoir. So You, you brought up to me earlier about flash memoirs. Can you enlighten us about what that looks and feels like? They are basically what I call short stories, but very short, 500 to 1,000 words often. Um, Some go up to, I think, 2,500 words. And for me, especially writing poetry, I'm used to writing short. So I need to make my points in a small context. And that's why I like Flash. And years ago, you, you everything was a short story that's what you heard and now uh, it seems that flash 
has become more popular, I, I think in the past, I don't know, 10 years. And for some people, it's easier. A lot of my friends who write novels cannot imagine making things that short, but I can't imagine writing a novel. So if I don't get the story in, in 500 words, then that's it. I cannot keep going and going and going. I, I just get lost. So I think it's very freeing and it also makes you be concise and get to the point, just like poetry. Um, it does take, well, everything takes a lot of revision. I do tend to revise and revise and revise. And, and actually when I do that, it gets shorter and shorter and shorter until sometimes I don't know if the point gets across or not. But that's the good thing about critique groups, right? Well, I was thinking about, it reminded me of, I believe it was Woodrow Wilson who wrote to the president earlier in his life. And he said, and I'll paraphrase this, Dear Mr. President, I apologize up front about how long this letter is. I didn't have time to write a short one. <laughs> <laughs> and it takes time to actually nail the words, doesn't it? It does. It does. It, it makes it, to me, it makes it more fun because you really have to pick and choose your words. And I love words. I love to hear new words. I recently was in a group, a Renku group with the Arizona State Poetry Society. Unfortunately, they were in Tucson and started to meet in person. So that was a little long place for me to go. And it was so fun. I had no idea what Renku is, was. I still am not exactly sure how to even explain it, but basically haiku that keeps going. But it's words. It, you really have to pick your words. And it was so fun. And you do it in a group. You start with a haiku and then it goes on and on. And it was just so fun to be with other people who were so like picky about their words. That was, that was a lot of fun. So. Yeah. It sounds like there's a lot of precision in it. Yes. Yes. And you mentioned earlier that one of your groups, I believe it's the prompt group. Uh, you can share if you like, but there's not critique or feedback. Where do you, where do you find your critique for your personal writing? Well, we do have, <clears throat> excuse me a critique group with Phoenix Writers Club that was started a few years ago. And I was, I was going to that, but a lot of the people were writing novels and that was a little much for me. Right now, since I've joined Arizona State Poetry Society, they offer critique groups and they also just offered a feedback where you can send a few of your poems and a poet with a lot more experience can then send you feedback. So that's what I've been doing. And I've been a member of many critique groups over the years, some good, some not so good. And I do have a few friends too that I run things by, trusted friends. And I have found that the biggest thing with critique groups is you really have to know that person and you, they have to know that you're going to take the critique nothing's personal. And that's what I want. And I think all people need that. You have to know that when someone critiques your work, they're trying to make it better. They're not saying it's no good. Or, or if they say they love it, they love it, they love it. That's not doing you any good either. You really have to be ready for a critique group. And I know it's kind of a tender decision for some people when they begin writing, because Nobody wants to be told their writing is no good, or as some people just cannot take that. Um, so I have found that um, looking for a critique group is not an easy thing. It, it really isn't. And finding one that fits you. But I would encourage everyone to, to find one, to try them, try different ones. There's a lot of online ones now and people from all over the country. So it's like, give it a shot and see if it works for you. But what what other things would you encourage writers to do? I mean, obviously, being connected to other writers and being able 
to do prompts and finding a critique group you've mentioned. Are there any other thoughts you have? Yes, read, 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 read. <laughs> read everything and read the newspaper. I love reading the newspaper, the real paper. That's, and I love reading books, real books. I don't read on Kindle, I don't have one. I know that's great for a lot of people. For me, it doesn't work. But I would say read every kind of genre you can. Even if you don't like it, just give it a shot. See what you, know, what you can gain from it. I would say join a writing group because that's where you're going to learn and learn your craft, take classes. There's, you always are gonna learn something from classes, whether they're college classes, community classes, you're going to learn. And with our speakers at Phoenix Writers Club, we try to vary things up. And every speaker is not gonna to appeal to everyone, of course, which is fine, but you always learn something, I feel. I always learn something, no matter what genre they write in. And so, I, but the biggest thing I would say is to read, read as much as you can. And also read in the genre that you are writing for. And for the people that you think are going to read your book to see if this is relatable to them. That would be my, my biggest thing to say. And it would help you then hone into your audience. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, I know when I will write children's things before COVID, I would take them into the children's classrooms and they would give me feedback. And, you know, kids are honest. <laughs> they, are, they throw it right at you, which was great. Um, and so it, I would really advise if you write children's to go in and, and read it to kids which is just delightful. I mean, I love working with kids. I think they are my passion to do that. Um, what kinds of things did kids tell you about something you presented? Uh, one thing, if they don't like the names, that was one thing. They didn't oh. like the names, which really... Of, um, of the characters? Yes. And I think some of them, maybe they were named the same thing. And so they didn't want that. And it was like, I understand. I, I understand that. Another thing they would tell me is, I don't think that's true. I don't think that's real. And today's kids, of course, being everything's technology, that is really concerning. I mean, you've got to be up on that, which I'm not. So that makes things a little tricky. And I have found that the things, the words that they use are different in a different context than we, we see those words. And kids have said, I remember I read some poetry to some and they weren't impressed, first of all, with my kids' poetry. And then we did a workshop where they wrote and oh, I was blown away. I was blown away. And these were fourth grade kids, what they wrote. And they really, they want to get into the meat of the subject. They know so much. And I think as, well, especially as a mother and grandmother, you never want to see your children hurt. So as I was writing some of my stories, I was protecting them. But I wasn't really protecting them. Because when you think back on all the, the children's stories, these kids are experiencing all kinds of drama. And that's what they want to hear. So that really changed my focus. It's like, okay, I need to beat my characters up a little bit. That's really, I think, very insightful. And, and having come from a grassroots place of the kids themselves, but I think about children's books or children's genres and how many of them were without a mother, without yeah. parents. And I mean, that's just an ongoing, really quite gut-wrenching theme throughout, um, you know, whether it's Snow White or Cinderella or the Harry Potter series, or I don't know. I mean, I could go on and, you know, on and on, but you're right. I think children really uh, react to, and maybe 
resent minimization. Yes. They don't want that pretend. Mm -hmm. They don't want that glass over. So good for you finding that out and being open. Yes. <laughs> yes, because I am a former foster child. So I have wanted to write a book to understand for kids to understand what is a foster child. Mm -hmm. And 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 you're right. All these stories don't have mothers in them. So my story could be relatable mm -hmm. to a lot of kids, especially today. There's just so many different kinds of families and mm -hmm. it's all so different. So, so hearing that from the kids is just so important. It really inspired me. Well, congratulations on all of the styles of writing you do. I applaud your courage in reaching towards and not away, not being, you know, concerned about taking it right to the reader and getting the kind of critiquing that you do. And I really appreciate your time today, Cindy. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you asking me. Well, it's been a joy to speak with you today, Cindy, and thanks to everyone who has joined us. I'm Marvel Harrison, and from all of us at Members Press, May your day be sparked with curiosity and wonder. See you again on the next Writer's Life.